Hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmad Adel and this is Coast Engineering Professional. And in this video, we'll continue talking about POMI and we will be talking about section B, which is SiteWorks. This section is a little bit big, so we are going to be splitting it into parts and this will be part one. So let's start. All right, guys, welcome back. Before we start, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning on notification because if you are a quantity surveyor, this channel will help you a lot. So let's start our video today. And this is section B, site works. So what are the contents or the subsections that will come under the site works? We have site exploration generally. We have the trial holes. We have the bore holes, site preparation, demolitions and alterations, shoring, underpinning, earthworks, excavation, dredging, disposal, filling, piling, driven piling, board piling, sheet piling, performance design piling, testing piling, underground drainage, paving and surfacing, fencing, landscaping, railway work, tunnel excavation, tunnel lining, tunnel support and stabilization. So as you can see, so many subsections are there and it's impossible to cover them in just one video. So we will be splitting it into parts as we discussed. So starting with the first subsection, site exploration. Here, keeping records of the site observations, site tests and laboratory tests shall be given as an item. So if you have any like laboratory tests or keeping records, all these things shall be kept as an item in the BOQ so that the contractor can price for them. Samples, site observations, site tests, laboratory tests and analysis shall be given also as an item. So for the samples also, we have to keep an item in the site works and providing reports shall be given as an item. All these things are coming under the site exploration. So the second subsection that we have here is the trial holes. What they are saying here, excavating trial holes shall be measured by depth. So if you have a trial hole, it has to be measured by depth in linear meter. And this depth taken along the center line, stating the number and the maximum depth below commencing level. So you have to mention the depth of the trial hole that you are doing. And this depth will be measured from the commencement level. From which level are you excavating and how many meters do you have to go down? So you have to mention that and you have to mention the numbers of the trial holes as well. Then earthwork support, which is not at the discretion of the contractor shall be measured by depth. And we have talked about discretion in the previous video the links to all the videos related to the POMI in the description you can go there and watch so earthwork supports which are not at the discretion of the contractor shall be measured by depth and we have to keep an item for that in the BOQ so section 3 here bore holes including pumping test wells so driving bore holes shall be measured by depth taken along the center line stating the number and the maximum depth below commencing level raking bore holes shall be so described so what they are saying here that driving bore holes, if you have a bore holes, then these shall be measured by depth, similar to the trial holes, taken along the center line, stating the number and the maximum depth below commencing level. Raking means wells. So wells bore holes or raking bore holes shall be so described. You have to describe that this is a raking bore hole with this much of dimension and the depth and this stuff. Okay, lining, which is not at the discretion of the contractor shall be measured by depth. So if you need to make lining here, again, we have discussed the discretion thing. If the contractor has no choice but to do it, he has to do it anyway, then you have to measure that by depth and it has to be kept in the BOQ. And cappings also shall be enumerated, which means counted. So you have to count any cappings that you have, which is cover for, for this bore hole or something like that. So they should be also counted. Subsection number four here, we have the site preparation. So they are saying here, removing isolated trees shall be enumerated. So if you have some trees to be removed, you have to count them and keep an item in the BOQ for the removal of trees. And removing hedges shall be measured by length. So if you have some hedges like that, then you have to measure that in linear meter and you keep them in the site works bill of quantity and it has to be measured by length. Site clearance, which shall include removing vegetation, undergrowth, bushes, hedges, trees, or the like, shall be measured by area. So if you have an area 
that includes everything like vegetation, undergrowth, bushes, hedges, uh, grass, whatever. If it's a complete area, then it has to be measured by area, like removing vegetation, undergrowth, and so on. This much of area shall be removed. All right, subsection number five, demolitions and alterations. The location of each item shall be given. Unless otherwise stated, old materials shall be understood to become the property of the contractor and shall be cleared away. So whenever a contractor is demolishing a building, for example, some steel scrap will be there. This scrap is understood that it will become the property of the contractor. The contractor will take it and will sell it or will use it somewhere else. So all the materials required to remain property of the employer shall be described. So if some materials that will arise from the demolitions or the alterations, if the employer wants to keep these items for himself, this has to be mentioned in the BOQ because the general understanding is that whenever there is a demolition, the materials that will arise from the demolition is understood to become the property of the contractor. Point number two here, removing individual fittings, fixtures, engineering installations or the like from an existing structure shall be given as an item. So if you have some engineering installations, some let's say AC system or some chandeliers, uh, some doors, windows. So removing these things from an existing building should be described in the BOQ or should be given in the BOQ as an item. Okay. Demolishing individual structures or part thereof shall be given as an item. So if you want to demolish one small structure or some separate structure, then this should be given as an item. Alternatively, demolishing all structures on a site may be given as an item. So if you have one site and in order for you to start your project, you need to demolish five, six buildings. So the demolition of the five, six buildings can also be given in the BOQ as an item. Continuing subsection five here, demolitions and alterations. Cutting openings in existing structures and alterations to existing structures shall each be given as an item. Making good all work damaged shall be understood to be included. So if you are required to do some openings in some existing slabs or something like that, this also should be given as an item. And when you make an opening, it will not be like a proper opening so you have to do some uh, repairs or something to that opening so making good all work damaged shall be understood to be included so that will be part of the scope and you have to mention this in the description to make it very clear okay temporary screens and roofs shall be given as an item that's uh, obvious i think okay so this is the subsection number five now subsection number six which is shoring and shoring is actually like providing supports. So shoring incidental to demolitions and alterations together with clearing away and making good all work damaged shall be understood to be included. So if you have some demolitions that requires demolitions or alterations that requires shoring, then in that case, the shoring and the clearing away and making good all work damaged shall be understood to be included in the demolition item and you have to mention that okay shoring other than that incidental to demolitions and alterations shall be given as an item but if you need shoring which is not for demolitions or alterations then this shoring should be kept in the site works as an item stating the location clearing away and making good all work damage shall be understood to be included then particulars shall be given where the design of the shoring is not at the discretion of the contractor. If you want some specific shoring, like let's say secant pile or diaphragm wall or something like that, something that the contractor doesn't have that choice, he has to go only for the system that you specify, then you have to give particulars so that the contractor knows that this is exactly the type of shoring that you need. Shoring which is required by the specifications to be left in position shall be so described. So here I believe they are talking about the temporary shoring or the shoring that will not be permanent, will not be there forever. But this item shoring which is required by the specification to be left in position, it means it's a permanent shoring. This shoring will remain there and it will never be removed. You have to describe that and you have to mention that this is a permanent shoring or that it will be left in position.
That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video and give us a comment down below. And let me know what are the videos that you would like to see or learn about in the future. This also helps me a lot making this content. And two things before you go, this presentation is made via Canva. I'll leave the link to that in the description down below and you can sign up for free. The second thing is our online courses, quantity surveying, cost estimation and procurement. And again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, take care of your families. Cost Engineering Professional out. Bye bye.